Okay, just the small question. Consistency between us or consistency from me? Between us. Please, we'll just be, like, speak simple English because you're moving around in circles. What do you want? I want you. To what? I want us to, to be consistent. <laughs> One thing about BK's house is there is every tendency that you as an individual who is not open to love and relationships in the real world out there could likely catch feelings in that house. And the reason for that is very, very simple and obvious. It's a confined space, number one. Number two, there's no way out except you want to choose a voluntary exit. Number three, you get to continuously every single day that you are in that house to see the faces of the same people over and over and over again so it's like a circle a non-stop circle and there's also the part where if you get to be very very close to a particular opposite gender male or female and you people spend a lot of time together talking together you literally wake up and see that person you go to bed you see that one particular person as a matter of fact you are more bonded to that one particular person than the rest of the house means there's a bit tendency that you begin to get infatuated with that person you begin to crush heavily on that person and automatically you translate that to mean that you are in love with that person and that is why 90 99 percent of the time most people who think they found their soulmates in biggest house come out and after a period of time probably three months six months or sometimes immediately after the end of the show they move on with their lives that's to tell you that everything in Biggie's house, 90 to 99% of the time, is transient in the midst of a scripted reality, a made-up reality, a staged reality. That's why it's even called a reality TV show. Hey, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Gloria Elijah. This is Frankly Speaking with Glory. I am the girl with the T. Pardon me for all my big, big grandma and all my crazy crazy serious analysis at the beginning of this video i was just trying to pass on a point but the reason why i had to give that preamble first is because of um two potential couples in the house i'm talking about um vino and terry's ship as well as the libo and impose ship now for vino and terry we we it's very clear it's a very very clear cut situation we know that these three people they are feeling each other we know that they cannot keep their hands or their lips or their eyes off each other for a few minutes and it's a struggle for them to pass each other by in the house without even extending their hands to touch or to kiss or to lick you know each other so that one is established we know that already they are a sheep but one thing i did not um expect all of a sudden to start happening is that these two are already having a strain in their relationship guys i got to know this from terry's conversation with venus so both girls of course they have a very very close and very very good relationship of course so they were sharing tales yes tales of their own situationships venus was talking about her situationship with bu talking about all the things that she has noticed about bu that bu tends to be jealous sometimes and then terry was also talking about the fact that in our own relationship with vinyl she really likes the guy she thinks he's a great guy she likes his mindset she likes how chill he is she likes how crazy he is about her however one thing she's not so sure about is it seems like he is a very very controlling person now remember i told you all that i think it was yesterday morning um terry and vino were having a conversation about outside the house how they are going to extend their relationship how they're going to proceed with their relationship and even grow the relationship and vino was telling terry that his ex-girlfriend used to spend the night in his house and terry said i'm not gonna sleep in your mother's house and guys let's remember that vino lives with his parents still yeah and he comes from a huge family like a lot of people and he's already doing successfully well outside of the show so dude is not really bothered about what could happen if he gets evicted or not so he was telling terry that oh outside the house if he has to go for shows terry's gonna come along with him oh this and that so most of the things he was saying which wasn't really a lot it just bore down to terry would have to follow 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 and guys, we already know that Terry has her life. Her, uh, what is it again? Should I say her career path or a trade or her occupation? I think that's the best way to put it. Terry already has her occupation as an adult content creator. Now, what I am not sure of is if Vino is fully aware that Terry is an adult content creator. I don't know. And then there's the other part 
that Terry has some unfinished business, some unfinished business with um, Vino's senior colleague. I don't know if it's his boss directly or his senior colleague. So there are all those loopholes in the relationship that Terry cannot tell Vino that, hey, I've had something or I still have something with your senior colleague or your boss. And that is because Big Brother has warned the housemates to stop talking about the outside world or people of notable personalities, celebrities like that. It would look like they are giving undue publicity to those people. People, publicity they did not pay for of course and so Terry further revealed that whenever she and Viner are having conversations she does most of the talking the guy is a very very calm person so he doesn't really talk a lot so she is the one that asks questions he answers the questions like it's an interview and most of the time he gets tired with the questions and then he's saying he's saying to her that oh is this an interview uh, let's not ask too many questions blah 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 but for her she is asking those questions because she wants to know who he is. She wants to know his personality. She wants to get to really know him because she's interested in him just as he is interested in her. Now guys, for her, she's having this vibe that the guy is not ready and willing to disclose information about his true self. And that worries her, but not a lot because she still has it at the back of her mind that at the end of the day, it's a game. They are all playing a game. Everybody is out to win. And both of them have had that conversation about the game they are playing on the show. Show. But then for her, the essence of asking all of those questions is to prepare her mind for whatever she will encounter outside the house with him. And so guys, she was also talking about, oh, she's not that kind of woman that is dependent on a man. So they might have a bit of a problem in that regard of him saying that, oh, when I'm going for a show, you follow me, you come to my house, blah, blah, blah. You know, for her, she's pretty much independent and she loves her life like that. The very interesting part of this whole relationship dynamics between Terry and Viner is, Terry has these worries and these concerns, but Vino on the flip side, when he goes into the diary room, he confesses his undying affection for Terry. He talks about how much he admires her independence. He talks about how much he's a calm person and he doesn't really talk too much, but when he likes someone, he goes all out to want to get to know that person and to be with that person. And that is exactly how he feels towards Terry. So guys, there's a breach in communication here from what I'm seeing because Terry is very, very expressive. She's very, very vocal, very, very assertive. She believes in dialogue, like constant communication. She wants to know what is in your soul, in your mind. Mind. But Vine on the flip side is a very, very physical person. So his love language is more of physical touch other than talking. And for people like him, he would rather show you that he's crazy about you than to tell you that he's crazy about you. So I feel like that is where Vino and Terry are having issues. And also, of course, there's the part that, okay, we're in Biggie's house. I don't know if you are using me you know, to create a relationship, a love story in the house so that people are going to like both of us and then keep voting for us and keep us in the house to the end of the show. So all of those things worry Terry. And guys, in the coming days, we are going to get to find out how they are going to sort that out. Now, moving on to Libo and Impose conversation. I liked that, even though we're going back and forth. My mom like, shit, yeah, I like, I like this. <laughs> not the arguing, but the, what it represents. Am I not direct? Am I not open enough? Probably or honest. Hey guys, I did a video yesterday talking about poor crying, yes, and telling Libo about how she felt jealous that he had started mingling and interacting with other housemates even though she was the one that came up with the plan that they should limit the way they spend time together so that her nomination issues you know or ill luck will not rub off on Libo so it was a very very dramatic conversation because she was literally crying and guys it seems like she now knows that her tears kind of rubs off wrongly on Libo. So whenever she wants to pass on her point, she breaks down and cries. And then Libo will just buckle down and melt like jello and then, oh, sorry, don't cry anymore, you know? So things like that. Um, yesterday, or I think, was it this morning or yesterday? I can't really remember anyways. But according to Libo, Mpo, right after they had made up, I started giving him the cold shudder all over again. He has, she has started ignoring him. And when he had confronted her about it, she had said that, oh, the other day, you lashed out at me in the closet area. And Libo was like, well, I do not know. If I did something to you, you are the closest person to me in this house. You should be able to come up and tell me what I did. But you are pushing me away. So guys, to cut long story short, Mpo has been ignoring and avoiding um, Libo, basically just giving him the cold shoulder. So 
today, this afternoon, um, Libo had to call Umpo and tell her that, listen, I need consistency from you. And then Mpo was asking what kind of consistency and they were just beating about the bush. And I'm glad that Mpo asked Libo, what exactly do you want? Because before they got to that point, Libo was basically saying that he's scared that she is going to hurt him because she has the capacity to hurt him. You know, if she breaks her heart and decides to stay away and walk away from her, there's every tendency that Mpo is going to get vindictive and you know, nominate him consistently. So he does not want to fall into a bad box and does not want to come across as a guy that played with a woman's heart. And so he opened up and said, listen, I want you. Please, we'll just be, like, speak simple English because you're moving around in circles. What do you want? I want you. To what? I want us to, to be consistent. You know what, guys? I don't think they ended that conversation properly. I don't think they finished up that conversation because, um, they had their diary session, of course, which did not end. And I think they're going to continue the diary session tomorrow. And then the housemates um, also were called on by Brief Brother. Briefed also to get engaged in the Johnny Walker cocktail mixing task. So, fingers crossed, probably after the task and everyone is all settled and after they are you know, working on their other weekly wager task, they might come back to that conversation. I would definitely bring you all the update on what Impulse response was to Libo's request. That's it. I'll see you all on another episode of Frankly Speaking with Glory Elijah. Do have an amazing, amazing evening. Bye. <laughs>